Yeah, for for feeding, that, this is a good question because I, I do not eat a hot meal in the summer. Summer I eat cool because I don't want to heat my, my house with an airtight cookwood stove. Right. So since of the seven days of the week, I'm basically vegetarian between four to five days at least, sometimes six. In the, and in the summer, it's a full seven, unless people invite me out for dinner someplace. So, and I have a small little garden out there. I used to have a two-acre garden in the old place. So for me, uh, I go by what my system tells me. I find that when I eat meat or in the summer, that's been, I feel, uh, I sweat more, or I shouldn't say, I perspire more and I feel, but in the winter, it gives me the type of protein I need for greater energy because for me, I love sweaters. So maybe I live in also temperatures that may not be conducive to other people. But so uh, again, that's conducive so for you. So cooking is on here. That's correct. It's got a wonderful stove and it uses very little energy, uh, but it gives an awful lot of heat. So I don't want that in the summer. As far as cooling, I've had nothing but problems getting a refrigerator that uh, that works under both DC power, direct current, and propane. Three times the refrigerator was at the uh, uh, border, uh, which means the border between British Columbia and the Pacific Ocean, <laughs> because all these things come from China, that they were, it was always held up for some reason. I could not get CSA approval, and they finally said, you can get these machines in Canada, we've got problems in China, you know, uh, do it here. Well, there's no one in Canada that really produced it. So, on the one hand, I have not had a normal fridge, but on the other hand, in the interim period, I've said, well, I'm going to get off propane by next year, so I want one just all direct current, and I have found uh, a couple already. One, unfortunately, the best one is in the States. So, that's coming in and it will get here after the new year. So I'm, I just got these old camping type of coolers. They're plugged in with DC. If you open up, it, 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 it cools. But I've also changed how I uh, eat, so I don't need a huge amount of refrigerator. I found out that when I moved from my farm, I threw out 90% of what was in the refrigerator. I said, how long has it been in here? Mm -hmm. Now maybe that's being a bachelor. So, but, so whether it's cooling or for heating, you take into consideration not only its impact for uh, what I'm doing, whether uh, for um, keeping heat in so I don't get cold at night or, or heating um, food, but I look at what are its other implications for, for the house. So um, take, for example, okay, um, I'm, I'm going to, uh, okay, so again, you have three types of insulation in the walls. In, inside, I'm going to walk to here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got eight inch blocks filled with sand and it's concrete. So this house is built inside out. Right, right. How this happened was the fellow who originally designed this, his name is Hans Albarda. He's a genius. He's passed away in his last year. But he was a creative arti artist that taught art in university. Well, of course, they said we don't need, oh, we don't need art in, 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 in school, so, you know, teach math. And, well, he didn't, he didn't like math. But so he was 25, minus 25 degree temperature on a January morning in his house. He, he took off his gloves, the visitor came over, nice and sunny. He put his hand on the outside wall, oh, it's hot. First thing he did was he went inside the house, exactly on the inner part of the wall where it was hot and he couldn't put his hand, put his hand against the wall and said, it's cold. What's the matter with how we build homes? So that's the philosophy of this house. It's built inside out. Now, so again, three levels of insulation, two of which are rigid, and the outside is stucco, which is again a, a cement based and it absorbs uh, energy. Now, if you notice, and it was mentioned a few times by people, how do you, how, how can you make the solar panel totally efficient when, when there's snow on top of them? I have 10 panels on the roof at an angle equal to, or it's three degrees above the latitude we're in. They say, 
Whatever your latitude is in, that's the angle you put in. I put an additional three degrees. Uh, and I've got six panels on the wall in between the windows. Mm -hmm. Guess which panels I never have to clean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guess which panels give me 95% of my power in the winter? Why? And look what I... Because why? If you look into the windows, I have six, seven feet of gravel, which nature's trying to grow through, and it reflects the sun in the summer. Mm -hmm. And what's on top of that gravel in the winter? Snow. And what does snow do? It reflects... So these solar panels, in, on a sunny day in the middle of winter, will produce 30 to 40% more power than they're rated for. Yeah. I had to change my... Uh, uh, breakers because I was blowing the breakers and the electrician said I don't understand I mean, you only have six panels there that's about 1100 watts you know and how come you know you, you, how much voltage you know? and so he had to do triple the amount of voltage allowed so I do have 10 panels on top originally I was supposed to only have six, uh, uh, five or six but I but I couldn't get the wind machine so they, occasionally, I have a ladder and a rake that I, mm -hmm. I think of it as exercise, except those days where it's blustery, and, I, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm throwing snow, I'm going, oh, geez, you know, and it gets into me, and I go, this is really heavy exercise. But the, the solar panels that I never have to do anything with. And what is their basic other advantage? The amount of pollution that is gathered on a solar panel in the middle of summer can reduce the efficiency of a solar panel anywhere from 5 to 15 percent. Unless it rains a lot, because the rain will get it. Never have that problem with the ones on the wall either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most solar panels on, uh, on, the wall, on the roof are put on the roof too close to the actual roof surface. And that builds up a heat behind the solar panel, which reduces their efficiency mm -hmm. substantially. But if you put it on a wall, you can have it a little closer because of the way the air goes through. It's constantly going behind, in between the panel and the wall, much more than it is on a roof. So uh, most of my power in the summer comes from the 10 so solar panels on a roof. In the summer, in the winter, most of my power comes from the solar panels on, on the, uh, the wall. The other thing is that it looks nice. Right? When I was looking at it, I go, hey, panel, eight, eight inch block eight filled, inch filled block, with sand. Filled with sand. Then you have air pocket. Then no, have, then I have insulation. Insulation. Yes. Then I have an air pocket. Air pocket. And how do you get that air pocket? How did you get that Strap. air pocket? What's the strap? Strapping. Strapping, okay. And then what do you have? And then I have two by sixes. Right. Uh, with a wood backing, with more insulation. And then where that forms, they used, what is that, uh, uh, Tyvek? Yeah, yeah, house wrap. Yeah, they put that on the outside, put, put a, a gluish type material on after that, and then the stucco. So that 17 inches uh, just happens to be 17 inches because um, two of the other home, homes only had two insulation. I went for the third. I figured... You can, you, can, you can have too much insulation in the ceiling, <laughs> but never too much in the walls. Right, right. Do you know what the R value ends up being for the rigid foam in the gaps? Uh, it was over 100. Over 100? Yep. Mm -hmm. Bec primarily because of the concrete box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. with, with the sand inside. Sorry, you, there's a vapor barrier on the inside? Yep. Okay, so it's basically standard construction, except for between the vapor barrier and the Correct. Rest route. Correct. So, and, and basically, it's, it's designed again that, okay, it's inside out so that once heat, okay, in the winter, once the heat gets in the house and it radiates, the walls do not feel cold. Mm -hmm. What kind of stucco is this? Is it plaster or yeah. stucco? Or? Yeah, and then they just, with, with some little brushes or whatever, mm -hmm. wanted to make it look. And the one thing you'll notice is that all my conduits, are external because you can't go into the wall. <laughs> right, right, right. And I'm, I'm sure that if you looked around, you'd also notice I'm missing something that every home has. Ceiling, right. 
No, no, I have, I have one. There. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I do have a few in, in the bathroom, oh, but okay. you're very warm. Think of something else that is absolutely a necessity in every home. What? Closets. <laughs> oh, oh, I have not one single closet in the house. Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> I, did you notice I was looking at you before you said that? No, you said be looking at her. <laughs> now, so what I I got armoires instead, right? Because right. for me, uh, I know that to, to put closets into a house, you are making the house smaller for living arrangements. Again, that's just me. You know, mo most people would say, "Well, he's weird," but I wanted to state that that I I, I don't have closets for that reason. So, uh, and because I wanted, see again, this house is built, my intention was, I want to serve my purposes, but I like the idea of building a house for the next seven generations. It's, that's just something that for me seems uh, human, if I want to call it that. So therefore, there are certain things that I, I don't need, but there's certain things that I've allowed space for other people to improve upon. So... Just to re-state, um, are we? Is the intention to finish today by noon? Oh, yeah. well, close. I, I'm okay. we're just now going. Okay, so now there's a lot of us here. It's, so, sorry, is, these windows. Is that center strip for strength? Well, but, yes, and, they don't open. I, no, they don't. And the, the idea was, I did not want to have one window pane total for strength wind, and there's a loss. The larger the window pane, there is, there is a slight loss. And, and also, I was told that by the time these windows will lose their efficiency, there will be transparent solar panels readily available mm -hmm. on the market. Yeah. And they're in basically in, the, in those widths. Okay. So I'm, I, was, I was trying to think ahead. How am I doing, Santos? Is good. that pretty good, good as far yeah, as the right transparent? On. Oh, yeah. And it's interesting, the transparent it's solar... It's already available in Italy, but it's, it's really expensive. Yeah, yeah, and so just like the regular solar photovoltaics were. And what happened, here's the interesting part. Hundred and some years ago, Nikola Tesla says, look at the ultraviolet, look at infrared, because that's where the real power is. So these transparent ones produce the power that the actual generating electricity is on the edges, isn't it? Yeah. So in the future, there may not even be a need... Which, which is how nature works, because we're going to run out of silicon. So, <laughs> anyway, so we're going to head off. There's to purple blaze. Do you know what the energy rating is on them? Or the U value? Uh, Do you remember? I have it someplace, but I, I, I tried to, I, I got the optimum that I could at that time. Um, so, there is so little difference between manufacturers these days. Yep. But, but I wanted to make sure I did not have the ones with the metal in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because that... As it, it'll, it'll prevent energy from leaving, but it also prevents energy from coming in, which to me is more important. So what are they? They, they, they just don't have the UV coating on Correct. the outside so that the sun's oh, heat no. can come through. Okay. Yeah, you want the heat to come in, but uh, because it'll be absorbed by everything else I've made. Mm -hmm. so, are, they, are they vinyl windows? Or? They no, no. no. Aluminum? So, so, oh, no, the fiberglass. fiberglass yeah. right. So the other thing is, I noticed there's a line all the way around the ceiling. Is that where your conduits come? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And all my wiring for the solar panels are above the ceiling, which you'll we'll see as we... Okay, so how thick is the pad at the floor? It's concrete. How four thick? and a half inches. Four and a half, okay. And good question, because underneath there is gravel at a minimum depth of eight to ten inches in the center and as much as 12 to 15 inches on the Excellent. perimeter. Is and the water pipes are in the floor, correct? Or in the concrete. Yeah. No, no, they're just underneath the concrete. Okay, between is there the ground. Insulation under the pad? Yes. Well, no, the insulation is, is underneath the actual uh, heating tubes. Yep. Yeah. And are we going to sample the baking after we're finished the tour? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> the baking. This. <laughs> what baking? Oh, it's not you didn't no, no, we're, we're, we're doing this now. Okay, okay. But if you want a piece, it's all, already been cut. Okay, <laughs> okay. I just wanted to be clear. All right, so so here we'll go to, um, if you want to come over. Uh, now, how many, so we'll, we'll do this. We'll, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, we'll do half of you that want to come into this small room, and the other half can get, get coffee and other things. Well, and, and, 
and, and Barry can help himself with some apple cake. Right. So, okay, so we can get about we can get about seven or eight people in here. We're not that big, so yeah, even more. I have two bathrooms, as you notice. Uh, be, be, it's not because I need more than one at a time. Uh, come on, okay. So notice again the door. Yeah. It saves space. I couldn't get concrete blocks here, but uh, and in here, but there is concrete behind there, and there's concrete behind there. Again, this is where this is the brains. Even though I talk a lot, I'm not the brains of this house. This is the brains of the house. What we have is we have uh, the lines coming through from the solar panels coming in, and they work their way into this huge battery that's in there. Mm -hmm. That battery does not need to be, it's already sealed, so it generates very little uh, EMF at all because it's, it, it is the recurrent in there. How many watt hours? Oh, I go by amp hours. Amp hours? How many amp hours? Uh, at 50%, it's over, a, it's like 12, 1300. And how many volts then? No, this is all 12 volt. It's all 12 volts, okay. Yeah. So what happens is that, I, I, I'll make it simple so that if I have no sun okay, I'll, I'll, at all, I can live in this house and never get below 60% state of charge for between six and seven days. So sometimes I can get lost in the numbers, even though they're important, but I look at how I live and say, now, when I get the um, uh, uh, wind machine, there is a secondary uh, uh, system that I'll be able to click manually or non-manually so I'll, have, so I'll have two battery banks, mm -hmm. so that it will, the switch will be able to tell which uh, battery to charge, or which one will be used first or second. So I will have that. The other battery is going to go here. Like you're a mathematician, so like the average Joe Blow, how complicated is this to understand? Okay, all you have to do is, is, is no. As power comes in, there's a certain voltage that it comes in at, and if it comes in at too much, the voltage is pressure. You're, you're, you're on a major highway. You're going hugely fast, and now you're going into an off-ramp. Right. You need some type of a break. Mm -hmm. That's what these charge controllers basically are. They're breaking the power down, or the, 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 the pressure down, so it can be accepted by that battery, because that battery is like the parking lot just off the run, runway, and how are you gonna step down fast enough? So these will generate a little bit of heat. So what you're, what you're doing is that you're converting each battery, uh, sorry, each solar array that comes in, it can come in at over 100, 40, 120, 140 volts. And you want to get that down to 12. So here, uh, uh, here's the central, and each one of these refers to each row of, of solar panels. So that will tell me at any one particular time exactly how much is coming into the system and and of course there's there's three levels you have to help me here um, uh, bulk absorb, absorb and float float okay because once that battery bank gets above 80 percent it it is not as efficient at accepting power it needs to slow down because it'll overheat the battery so right santos it has to go down to either absorb or float eventually so this battery uh, that happens at around 90, 92%. So right now it's in bulk because there's not much power coming in. So what mm -hmm. happens if on a really sunny, hot summer day or whatever, like this is full, like where does the excess go then? It stops here. The dump load. Yes. The dump load. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it can stop here or it can go into some place that can make use of that what power. What kind of water heater do you have? You don't have a water heater. Right behind you. Just... Oh, just that. Oh, and so, bed. yeah, and so what happened? No, no, that's no, that, the aggregate. That's the, so, okay. so usually on a really hot day, the system says that, that's all you have. That's it. Mm -hmm. the, the tank is downstairs. Yeah. So what happens is I know that part of this dump load is I'm heating hot water all the time. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And what water is being heated? Can you see? Right in here. Mm -hmm. You have a pump that that, that pumps the glycol, vegetable oil, basically. Uh, system that's on the roof, it says there's at least five degree temperature between that and the temperature of the water. Let's start these two little pumps. 
the both AC pumps, and I had needed that in order to get the uh, mm -hmm. what I call uh, the warranty intact. So wa uh, water is going in. So is this hot right now? Or? No, because no, it, it's not working very much. Okay. But as soon as it gets a little sunny, this starts to heat up a bit. Mm -hmm. Because on one side of the main, uh, of the, because it actually there's, there's, there's four channels. Two for the glycol, two for the water. And they go in between and you have these little bars that are extremely, extremely hot. And it's supplying me with all the power. So when I have extra power, when it's nice and sunny in the summer, it's running these two 50, uh, 50 watt uh, pumps. And... As time goes on, I have a dump load that will help my, my uh, which I which I'm building in the spring. Will have for my little uh, uh, where I grow all my seedlings like a uh, like a greenhouse. Yeah, and it will he be heating that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and and that's and that's the system. So the other thing is that you notice wherever possible, I maintain and and, and will put some type of insulation around the pipes. Mm -hmm. The maximum amount yeah. of water traveling from the heat water tank to anywhere else because the other bathroom is right behind there is less than 14 15 feet less opportunity for the power or not the power but for the uh, heat to be lost if you look at most homes look how far the hot water has to travel be before from the water hot water to where it's needed and what's the average number of times that hot water is heated before it's used in the average house that, that's a huge thing. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's a thing. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it, 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 it has the it has the other. And that's sort of like an external. Yes, because that's heat, actually heat exchange. Right? Yes, yes. So how many how many times is it heated? Two and a half times. Two and a half. So why do we we only need it once? Yeah. But it, that's for comfort that we have. Instant. You know that we have hot water on demand, yeah. and when you turn your hot water on, how long does it take before it gets hot? Mm. All that water that mm. you is still cold, you've already heated two and a half times, it is, but it's cold now. So my system means that when I turn the hot water, if I have hot water, I turn the hot water tank, I go 1,000, 2,000, it's hot! Mm. <laughs> Do you have an air exchanger? You're ahead of me. Oh, sorry. Thank you for being ahead of me, but we'll get there. You didn't hear, but it's, it's not active, you said. Correct. Uh, what, well, no, yeah. some of this is all my water, and the ones that... Um, Yes. Are open are for the in, in, in inlay floor. So all I have to do is turn them back in. Yeah. I pull this out and I connect. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. So right. Would you you've got a, a water tank somewhere? Well? It'll be downstairs. downstairs. I'll, I'll show okay. that to regular, you. Not yeah. regular, but a water tank. All right. So again, the brains is here because this is what uh, changes DC to AC where it's needed. You see, I have two. I have a twelve, a DC. That I have, uh, where I use a great deal, and that's my AC panel. I don't have much there. So those are DC breakers. Yes. They look the same as an AC. Yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> the more expensive. Ah, so, uh, yeah, but yeah. yeah. But, but the thing is, it's that, all expensive. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and and here's the thing is that. Okay, I'm not here, and the, the state of charge, which is now showing me at 97%, uh, because I, di I, I cheated. Yesterday, I, November 1st or November 2nd of every year, I test my generator, mm -hmm. make sure it's working. Mm -hmm. I put it on, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it until it gets up to about 98, 99%, mm -hmm. and so that's why it's there, because it, it was around 78, 79% when I turned it on a lot, a lot last night. But so, anyway, let's say I'm not here, and... Somehow they, they, this goes many 60%. That device, which is oh, yeah. automatically turn on the generator. Okay. The generator. Yeah. So anyways, now, okay, here is Nikola Tesla's wireless system. Oh, yeah. By accident, I had this charging system. And it was at 50%, you know, you're not supposed to get too much below 50%, right, Sano? Yeah. So I put it there. Look what I left on the top, sticking out. The connector. Okay. <gasps> How did I get the hundred percent? It's not plugged in. It's accepting power through the. Because the inverter is yeah. is promoting yeah. a field, hmm. and it's hitting it. So the next day, I put my cell phone. Oh. I put my cell phone on top of there. Huh. I come the next day. 
How did it get from 54% to 100%? Nikola Tesla, you know what you were talking about. So there's an example of within three feet, energy going through the air, supplying power. I, I didn't want to expand it too much, but I, but I did. I put this device over here, and it was around 60%. The next day when I came, it should have been at a hundred if I had put it there. Right, right. It was only at eighty. Oh, okay, okay. So that's so there is a loss. It's just charging mm -hmm. itself right there. It's a battery inside there. Right? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. that I found it. So here I have my lightning arresters, and so th these are the breakers we had to change because the the battery the, the um, solar panels were charging above who, the rate. Who installed your system? Yeah. Are they still around? Oh yeah, a friend of mine. A friend of mine. Oh, a friend of yours. Okay. Yeah, he, he's the one who also set up my other system. But it's not a, a company? Was it a company? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What was you don't want to say? Or uh, I'll talk to you personally. Oh, okay. Home. Sure. Did, did the ESA inspect us? Absolutely. It has to be. Yeah. No. Okay. Well. And, 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 oh, yeah. so, <laughs> and, and here's the interesting part. <laughs> that much of the time, the inspe ESA inspector was here looking at this. He asked more questions than anyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was saying, yeah. really, you can do that? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they don't know that much. No, they it's, really it's like you, yeah. you, you have to say, no, no, no. No. you're a wonderful bot. Let's take a look here. Well, it, it, they all had it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, I, same with the solar panels. They're all CSA approved. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, this is, now, this is the only place in the house also that generates an electromagnetic field that I can feel. Because mm -hmm. I can still feel it. How many watts is the uh, inverter? Thir okay, it's a 3,500 watt inverter. Okay. But for those, you, know, you should not be supplying more or using this more than 3,000 watts past a level what six or eight minutes. So, okay. so, so, so three, you, know, you don't want to go above 3,000. Really. Yeah. So if I want to go up no more than 3,000, and I want to put a car charging center out in my in my uh, outside. Mm -hmm. Jeez, 3,000 watts, they all want 240 volt. I'm lucky if I only get 10 amps at a time. Forget that. So what I did was I talked to another electrician that's knowledgeable. He says, we can adjust the actual charge unit to, to take 120 volt. Oh. So I can have more amperage so to reduce the But, but it of takes time. longer to charge, though. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. It, I mean, but for me, the car's going to be charged while yeah. I'm living here. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. All right, so, and so again, that's the water heater mm -hmm. that's back in there. And now maybe, can you switch spots with the, the next group? No, you have to go. Oh, all right. I, I'd love to come again. Can you write down for me the name of that first kit? There's two vents there, and there's two vents on the other side of the house. Did any of you see any pipes in the back of the house? Well... Let's quickly go, no, let's go in through the windows, and you're going to see four pipes, 121 feet away. So come on over here, look. you can either look through that window or this window here. So come and take a look. Go ahead. Go in either, okay, so what you're going to be looking at is four geothermal pipes. That two intake and two out. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I saw them. Yes, and they are five and a half feet in the ground. Well, why are they? What's the temperature of the soil at five and a half feet? Fifty degrees. Between fifty-three ten, ten and fifty-four. Celsius. Hmm? Ten degrees Celsius. So between fifty-three and fifty-five degrees all year round. So, so you mentioned there's no pump on that. Ah, there is. There is a pump. Now, I don't know if you'll hear it, but I have a little muffin fan. It's starting, and within five minutes or four minutes, this will be working. I didn't. I I, I unhooked it because I knew we'd be letting people in here. Because no, most of the time that I'm here, I only use the other doors because it, you need to have the home sealed for this. Because once you get the uh, the air circulating, it'll continue circulating until you open up a door or open up a window or an animal plugs one of the pipes on the outside. Mm -hmm. So as long as none of those two things happen, or three things happen, you have 40% of the air being exchanged, volume of air being exchanged every hour at 53 to 55 degrees. Mm -hmm. No need ever for, in the summer, an air conditioner. Mm -hmm. Is there a condensation problem with humid air coming in? So, good question. 
There is, but what you do is you have the pipes in such a way that the lowest spot in the ground of the pipes is right at the base of those. Mm -hmm. All you need to do, and I've only had to do it once in the six years, I just get a vacuum. Oh yeah. Just sucks the water right up. You know, and, and I've seen how much has been there. M you know, minimal. Mm -hmm. Because it's constantly going. My biggest concern is in those in days like today. But if the air is constantly moving, see, it's probably causing more condensation in the pipes now than, than when it's working. Because I notice that as long as the air is moving, mm -hmm. the increase in moisture in the pipe system is diminished. So is there an air exchanger that it's going through? Or no. is that actual air coming into the house goes through the Actual air going through the house that never stops unless one of the three things that I mentioned. So if there's a possible condensation problem in the pipe, what about mold? Uh, I had thought about doing something yeah, like that, well, but I wasn't sure if you'd ever have a problem with mold in the pipes. So far I haven't, and in the system where this was de was, was designed, that's, ha that's had now 16 years, no mold whatsoever. Yeah. I don't know why, yeah. I don't know why, but it, just because, but they keep it, they keep the air flowing all the time. I figure that as soon as you, all of you leave, I'm going to put the system back on because I only use the other doors. Uh -huh. I don't use this door. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I open this door, the seal is gone. Now, a system like this, is that regulated by, uh, by building codes? Nope. Or that's, nope. they don't? They look at that and go, oh, wow. Interesting. So much so, so that if, if this is an airtight home, though, when you built it, were there regulations that you had to have a heat recovery ventilator in? Nope. Because we're doing an airtight, and it has to have an HRV. So really? So, because if you show them that, and you can prove that you have... Uh, the camera. <laughs> work your way down. Okay. So you notice, cool. this is different construction for, from the center, because this was an add-on. Right. Okay. So go on downstairs. Yeah. So this is the mud room where the dog comes in and oh, gets okay. moved. Yeah. Um, and you go downstairs into the tornado room. Okay. And then I'll follow you. The tornado. Does anyone else like to come? Woohoo! Oh, okay, now okay. that's, that's the water. No, no, we're not out. Okay, that's uh, yeah, 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 well, we'll definitely yeah. reconnect about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, is there, is there so another website? Room? My connections Plenty. are on that website. Okay, okay so, okay, so, okay, yeah, okay, 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 yeah. The solar hot water system goes up here. Here's the hot water tank. So uh, when the temperature of the water in here is less, is five degrees less than the temperature of the glycol, we start getting circulation and you get heat. Now, I can get okay. you. Now, let's say that uh, I have visitors or uh, it, it's been cloudy for 20 straight days, which happened last year. This is my backup uh, on demand. Uh, works with propane tankless water heater mm -hmm. it works with a spizio and uh you know to to, to start the f initial flame i don't have it on right now because i don't want to be wasting any power so if i wanted to start it i have to then you know, get get it. that's right now i mentioned to you that water is coming into the house at 1.7 gallons per minute because it's a 12 volt system and it's 68 feet in the ground so it has to pump air way up and then over Mm -hmm. So it goes into this large tank, mm -hmm. 200, 200 gallons? 260 gallons. Yeah. 260. Yeah. So it has a float in there, so when it gets down to about here or so, it comes on. Mm -hmm. And it will and it will be on until it gets up to regular height. So I said, okay, I, I need that as, as a reserve because I'm using water at 5 gallons a minute. Mm -hmm. So I have a little circular 12-volt DC pump that takes water from this tank mm -hmm. into my pressurized, pressurized system. Okay. Now, it's a small pressurized system because what they wanted to give me was something less than half that size. I said, I want to optimize this pump because it's the only moving part that can fall apart. Mm -hmm. So I want something that is not as small as what they were giving me, but not as big as what we normally have because then this pump stays on. You, you, yeah. This pump has a problem. Of heating up so if you constantly are putting it off and on you you limit its lifetime but if it gets too hot for too long it limits its lifetime as well so mm -hmm. I tried to optimize and that was the size of the tank that gives me uh, approximately three flushes of the toilet okay and that's and I said that's good so 
I only hear this pump come on on average once a day. If that. Mm -hmm. So. Is that what we heard earlier? Yes. That's and and that's the only issue that anyone has ever made because I become used to it. What's that noise of that pump? I said, <laughs> I want to hear that pump on so I know that it's working, working. <laughs> and I don't want to have to come down here to find out that it's not. Mm -hmm. The biggest issues I've had with the water system is the device is adjoining here because water comes from here, goes in through a thermostat in there, and it will not heat unless the water is beneath a certain temperature. Mm -hmm. And so all the connections are the ones that have caused me all the problems in this place. You can see it's leaked a few times mm -hmm. and every time, you know, oh yeah, yeah, we have to improve there. So the, the person who put in uh, this um, tankless uh, is no longer doing this work anymore. <laughs> I understand why. So that's the only issue I've ever had there. And so as you can see, water is coming in. Um, back in, in uh, through the wall, and and basically, uh, if if I run out of water or the system stops working and I can't use my rigor, I just undo this and I have at least I think it's it's done for about 120, 125 gallons. I always have 125 gallons of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's very potable. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and eventually, this is also my storage. Well, some of that stuff is going to go away. By the way, when I was talking about. Um, uh, who asked me the question about condensation? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Ain't There's it? my vacuum I used yeah. to get to. And right. so little was in there that I, yeah. I recognized that as long as I keep it going. So the person who designed it said to me, he said, you always want it running. And you'll never, it will never stop. Except, But he did warn me. He says, what will happen is the first time someone comes in and doesn't know what's going on, so when my family comes... Mm -hmm. I, I take it off right, right, right. <laughs> because they're going to be opening every door in the house to get out. Yeah, yeah. And I and now the reason why I, I know that this system works in 2014, a year after I built this house, um, I was giving a talk, and in the audience were two developers, and they wanted to see what individuals were doing to put into their development. One of them was 160 homes, the other was like 400 and some home development. Both of those individuals in the Milton area are using that system for, and not one single house was originally built with an air conditioner, and it has a central system mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. can shut off, so if a person, if an individual does not want to make use of it, all they do is flick a switch. Mm -hmm. And... And, there, and it has an isolation switch, so uh, like an extra valve, so in case they open up their home, quickly that isolation valve will, will, will shut them off. Mm -hmm. They're using that as their cooling and their mm -hmm. heating, so they never have to worry. So one thing I said, if I leave for three months in the winter, I will never worry about freezing, because the temperature will never get below. 53 yeah. to 55, wow. because the thermal mass will keep it there. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. That's, that's so can fantastic. I ask you a question? Yes. How do you do your laundry? Yeah. Good question. Um, I have to go to a laundromat because my low water system uh, was held up again by people in, this time, Buffalo. But no, uh, Niagara Falls or Buffalo, one of those two. Uh, because it is, again, American. So... I'm having one built by a gentleman who purchased one, and he says, I, 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 I can build one like that. So it's a low... You know when you were in that, um, my little, uh, uh, my mechanical room there? Mm -hmm. Just to the right, you, you see pipes right there? That's where it's going to go. Okay. So I, those are the two issues that I found that I could not resolve immediately. Laundry and refrigerator. Both appliances. And because there's, and now there is a company in Canada that's making the refrigerators and who's making, um, you know, the laundry, but is either so expensive or mm -hmm. extremely inefficient. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know, I'm looking at spending one third g getting this refrigerator from, from the States as with the Canadian company who's making something similar. Mm -hmm. So I go, no, there's something wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, and again, yeah. I'm lucky since I'm an individual, a single. So, and for me, it was more, it was as important to use less water. 
because the amount of water in regular washing machines would you say is more than needed? Oh yeah. <laughs> so you re- so that's and 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 like I say, I'm able to you know make use of that uh, concept that you know if I can't get, I have the time. But in 10, 15 years, I may say I don't have the time. I better do it right away. Uh, but any other questions? That- so you don't shower in the morning and you don't wash your clothes. <laughs> And you live alone. <laughs> so, so now my question is: Well, he beat me to the punch. What's your point? <laughs> Did you make your own yogurt? I have. In I the see. Past. I see. There's a, a lot of yogurt containers. Yeah. Well, those I'm using for uh, I got from uh, various people uh, for for potting plants in the spring. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Because uh, it, eventually there's going to be shelving up here uh, that I have in the garage that I will have here for preserves and whatever, and the greenhouse will be ha- uh, just between where the dog's uh, area is and my garden, right in there. That's where the greenhouse yes. is going to be, and that's mm-hmm. where I'm going to be putting my, you know, all my plants. So mm-hmm. I saw that you had dog food. I saw that you had cat food. I haven't seen the cat. They're wild, oh. and there's three in the garage. Oh. So what do you have in your garage, if you don't mind my asking? That Quonset is the home of the cats, and it has uh, tools, it has my extra tires, some little extra firewood. My main firewood comes from the house there, but I had some extra firewood down there. And it has all those devices. Oh, and it's also powered by a a solar panel and I have solar lighting in there. And it basically uh, is where I store uh, my rototiller, my uh, walk-behind rototiller, my walk-behind snowblower, so basically, mm-hmm. uh, oh, and also I have extra cages uh, for for the for the dog or c- collecting animals, which mm-hmm. are very prevalent, and that's why I have a great Pyrenees because mm-hmm. we have a very high coyote. I mm-hmm. can I live in the area. I live just a block and yeah. a half north, so I know exactly what you're talking about. So yeah. she, when I got her, she has uh, a couple nights ago. She had violent discussions. <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay. Any anything else? Are we? So again, uh, the, the light is uh, now. That's an LED. It's not a. Um, uh, fluorescent. That's fluorescent. I don't like sure. fluorescent lightings. Mm-hmm. I like them more than incandescent. But fluorescent lighting, the original ones were exceptional. Mm-hmm. But as soon as they mass, they made them on mass, they could break. Crack. Mm-hmm. Uh, they only look. quality of light. On oh, it's totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I like this more natural lighting mm-hmm. that doesn't interfere with mm-hmm. our health mm-hmm. as much. Mm-hmm. So, and the LEDs also don't dim in cold. So I have, have to admit I wasn't here when you came down. Is that where do you get your water from? From your roof? No, I have a water. I have a well. Oh, wow. okay. Twelve volt yeah. pump that can only pump one point six seven gallons per minute. Yeah. It goes into the storage yeah. tank. And then I have a smaller circular pump here that pumps water into the pressurized tank at five gallons per minute, which is how fast we <laughs> to get the pressure. So, so it's, a, it's a DC submersible pump yes. in the well? Okay. Strange as may seem, it was the only one that was both a 12 and 24. I could have got a 24 or 48 volt, mm-hmm. no problem, but then I needed to transform it from 12 to 48 and so whatever. So I wanted mm-hmm. one, so I don't didn't need extra transformers, extra right. opportunities for failure. Mm-hmm. So uh, as a 24 volt, it would have brought water up 68 feet and over at 3.4 gallons per minute, which is still far less than the, the, the 5 gallons per minute. So I went oh, yeah. to, to the secondary pump, which... Uh, Work is loud, but it works very nicely. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. Did I answer? Yes, you did. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, are we heading back up? So, what diameter is a submersible pump? You know, how big is it? Uh, it, it, it it's standard. Standard. So it's yeah. like what about four and a half? Four. four yeah, I was going to say close to but almost five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so we have a well. We're going to go. We're going to go outside yeah. now. I have to leave. Oh, okay. And I and um, taking yeah. Logan or with you? Yeah. Okay. But um, the the list. Do you want to keep that? Like I can. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll keep it. Phones? Yeah, I'll keep it because I'm sure and, and I'll, I'll bring it. Up. I'll bring it to you at the next time we meet. Okay. Yeah, I, got, I just got a call from. Her. I use this mostly in the summer because that's when I want to lower the temperature. Yes. Because if I'm if I'm heating wood to get the temperature up to sixty five to seventy degrees, and I'm I'm forcing air in at fifty three fifty five, I'm sort of 
going against myself a little bit. <laughs> but in the summer, when I, when it gets, because you figure, well, a lot of heat must come through the windows, not as much as you may think, but it still gets mm -hmm. 75 to 80 degrees. I'm using Fahrenheit, sorry. Yeah. Between 75 and 80. Once the system is going, that just drops right down because mm -hmm. I'm replacing air, you know, at least 40% of air every hour. So this year, the warmest temperature I had in here when the system was working was 72. That's the warmest I had. And I found out that I only had one of the, <laughs> one of the two working, you know, my memory. Uh, do you, I don't understand the physics, like how it keeps itself okay, going. Okay, so what you do is the fan is working. Okay, so, every, so everything's airtight. Mm -hmm. You have a certain amount of air in here of a certain volume. Mm -hmm. Once air starts to leave here by the fan, it's got to be, it's got to come in through the other because it's going to suck it in. Yeah. You, you can't have non-air. Mm -hmm. So once that gets going, that the air gets totally circulated through which, and as long as it, the outside is not, um, how do you say, plugged in any way, mm -hmm. this system becomes part of outside. Air is constantly being so it's, it's a vacuum, then. basically. Yeah. And once that goes, the only thing that will stop it will be an animal to plug it or something that I do. Oh, I see. But it does need the fan going. Oh, yeah. No, just just, just, just to start. It. Just, just to start. The start. Cherry system, then. Yeah, because like, once it's going, it'll just continue flowing. It's like saying, "Well, why does the wind keep blowing?" You know, if, if there's nothing forcing it mechanically to go. Mm -hmm. Well, no one would ask that question because they say, "Well, it's 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 open. It's air." Think of the system as part of that air system, but it's tubes that are being part of the outside system. So the air will constantly, once it's being sucked in. Mm -hmm. It continuously flows in because it's being forced up. So like siphoning a hose you? when you suck no. on it, right? No. Like siphoning on a hose. You Correct. Suck on yeah. it, get it going. So, and so you have somebody design this. Mm -hmm. Someone yeah. else that designed this, okay. Hans Albarda. All right. He used other uh, technology that was that used uh, that came up with this, and he designed it for the house. Hmm. That is the greatest or the most important feature of this house besides its thermal mass right. uh, you know, right. approach. Because that prevents mold and mildew, moderates temperature, so it reduces my cost of living here. Mm -hmm. Since I'm a senior, I only have so much money, I, 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 you know, and so anything that I don't need to go into my wallet for every month so I can enjoy that, and at no cost to me, really. So that system repaid itself already. So the one thing I don't think I would like in a house I have would, was the external uh, plumbing and uh, wiring. Yeah, I, I, uh, but, I, but could you modify the design to have, like I say, a two-inch internal wall where you did that? Without a, no, the only way design? of doing that I found was to do it um, totally in the niches, like you see, that's where I did it there. Right, right, right. So you're actually adding in those areas where you need, so you don't really, it, it doesn't look like it, it, it looks out of place, so I would make, you'd make use of more of the corners. Mm -hmm. But because that by, uh, I had to have so many plugs every few, few mm -hmm. feet. Mm -hmm. If you notice, uh, okay, AC, DC, DC, AC, uh, sorry, DC, AC, DC, so I alternate, right. and so instead of putting it around right the ground, which I could have, right. and putting that molding, right, right. you could have this run along the ground, mm -hmm. so you eliminate, but for me, the basis of the house is, Generally. and if I'm going to put a coating on that, I'm now causing it not to work as well. Right, right, right. That's what I was my question. But see, or and then because some of my wiring is on top, so you can do yeah. some on top. Yeah. Or they gave me the the, the choice mm -hmm. of putting it on the bottom. I had or a chair rail too. Yeah. You could put it in a chair rail. Mm -hmm. And and if you notice something that when they did this house, the person putting the the concrete floor did not do something. See the cracks? Yeah. Now, the cracks aren't severe. No. But he didn't put 
pressure release. Right, you know, right, right. Right. And the place that you notice it the most is at that doorway. And that's the place so you have it here, you have it over there, and mm-hmm. in, a, in a few places. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when I had to make that decision of to put it along there or there, because of uncertainty mm-hmm. of the floor, I was forced to do that. Right, right, so that's right. a good question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so otherwise, I would have had it along the floor. I see. Yeah. And, and go around. See, it would. I would have a, like something like that. Floor and come up. Yeah, be going over top right. and then coming down, but being along the bottom. Right, so right, 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 right. I can live with that. But what did I say initially? Is that it's me. Mm-hmm. You don't have yeah, to yeah, yeah. because there yeah. are ways of getting mm-hmm. around that. Mm-hmm. So as you can see, uh, there's my lighting. Oh, the other thing that. that I really like here because I, I don't use my lights very often because every time I do that, yeah. I can hear my battery going. Mm-hmm. So what, what, it's not doing those? that. Yeah. Okay, these are just wonderful. Yeah. I, I, don't even, I have four of them. Camping lamps. I wish I had ten more. This one I've used now uh, for three, four days solid. Oh, that's not very strong. So it's got solar panel. So I, I go to this one because here's where I do most of my work right here. I just bought, I just got myself a desk which I haven't set up yet. But almost all my work is done here. I, I do research work on a lot. So I just did finish my research paper on a Nikola Tesla. I did one on Rudolf Steiner, and now I'm doing one on Edgar Casey. So that's oh, what I do as a sideline. This gives me all the, the light I need for roughly between four to five hours. Solar panel on each one. When I got these, Ikea was selling them. And I go, oh, so I went to all the Ikeas. None of them had except the one in Mississauga. So I went there and, and I said, oh, I'll take four. And on my way home, I was saying, I should have got a lot more. I, I should have used my instinct, gone back and picked more. Because, two reasons. They cost me $21 each. $5 went to feed hungry in Africa someplace. I thought that was, if that was the case, I thought that was great. But they worked so well, they worked, they worked so well that it was affecting the sale of some of their other lamps, so they stopped. So when I went back afterwards to get them, I couldn't find them. I can't find these. Even the people around here, up at the Bruce that, that, that sell um, lighting and whatever, they can't even get me this... this this and I said this is not super duper quality. It's just mm-hmm. it's a small little LED light. So I read with this and whatever. So mm-hmm. only when these go. So I have four, always on the windowsill, just because they they will absorb a little bit, not much on today. Oh, one thing I wanted to find out was you see how cloudy it is. Let me take a look at how much the solar panels are. Yeah, yeah. how much producing currently? Any guess? Okay. Sandra, 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 you cannot guess. guess. Yes, yes, as you know. I'm going to say uh, 80, 80 amps. No, you, you can give me wattage. Oh, wattage. Okay. okay, so so each one of these each one of these will show five times 185. So you've got roughly about 960 watts oh, okay. available. Oh, okay, so because they're 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 yeah okay. Because each one of these represents one of the lines. Yeah. Okay. So hang on, I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna do uh, uh, I'd say eight times. I'd say tops uh, 300 watts. Wow! Yeah. I wish I wish I had panels that that good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd say 150. 115. 115. 115. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So yeah. now, yeah. Uh, if I if I adjust this to show you 117, if I show you the ones on the wall, I can approximate. Yeah. Yeah. It okay. would be close yeah. to 250 right. because. Of, just that little extra re- oh, okay. re- 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 reflection, yeah, yeah, even yeah. on a cloudy day. So, so that's just that's just the one panel, the one set of panels. What? Well, yeah, and, 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 I, and I can adjust it. So, so this shows the rooftop, roof oh, okay. bottom, See, I was going and the wall. Thing. I was going the whole thing. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so you're pretty close. Yeah, so, yeah. so we got one. We got one uh, 10, 115, We got two thirty. We'll have a, a total two, about four hundred and fifty. So you're, you're pretty, pretty good. Okay, so you were doing the whole thing. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that gives you an indication, even on a not so good day. And and the, this will tell you the amount. So you got 122 volts coming into the system now, mm-hmm. and I've already uh, stored a 0.1 kilowatt hour already today. 
yeah. on a really cloudy day, so on yeah. the sunny, this will be making noise. It'll be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, are we ready to go? Did everyone, did everyone Where was his battery? Did you see where it was? Right there. 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 there. Right 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 there. So because they're lead acid. Oh, they're, they're minor oh, lead acid. Oh, he acid. used to have cerettes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Lead, lead acid. Yeah, yeah. You've got to have the, because yeah. of the hydrogen. Yeah, yeah. Mine, yeah. mine have died. Yeah, yeah. you got to have it. i got to do something. Yeah. 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 No, no. Okay, look at all that. He's still installed. He can have a chat. Well, it's hard to get us in the office. Go out of that shit. No, the younger son. But the older.